hi to everyone who joined. We have 40 viewers. That's what? amazing. That's incredible. <laughs> I've never expected that. Thank nice. you so much for joining. And uh, my name is Stefan. You probably know me by the tag Analog Approach. And today I am joined by my fellow Dennis, who is uh, better known as Kleidsam on Instagram. And we are going to take a live tour of his closet today. Oh, yeah. So At least part of it. <laughs> you know, grab, a, grab a cup of coffee, sit down, drop the questions below if you have any. And actually, we, we already got loads of questions. Can you see the pile, Dennis? Well, actually, I need to turn uh, yeah, around yeah, on the camera, course. so you need to turn. Yeah, not, 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 not that important, but we got, some, we got some questions for you. They're coming nice. at you. But first of all, how about you uh, tell us something about yourself, just like two sentences. Yes. Um, so, hey, thanks for the introduction, Stefan. Um, already mentioned the name. My name is Dennis. Um, I'm sending live from Cologne, so um, virus-ridden country. Um, <laughs> probably the, the epicenter, epi the epicenter yes. of the virus outbreak in Germany. Um, but yeah, um, we don't let this fucking virus get on our mood, and we try to stay positive as much as we can. So um, let's just focus on the good things for now. We don't talk about the virus within the next probably half an hour, but more about textures, fabric. That's designs, what I like because I jackets. prefer it as well. Perfect. Exactly. Um, so. Let's You're see. fine. That's great to hear. And that also was my first question. So uh, let's start with, oh yeah, of course. Why don't you show us how your wardrobe is um, made up of or what it is, what it's structured like? Well, so um, that's actually a good starting point. So basically um, what you can't see right now is that we've got like five of these compartments in a long line. So from left to right. And we get another one sitting to the right of me, so in this direction. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and it's basically divided by suits. Then it's sports jackets, it's tie and shirts, actually. It's shirts mm -hmm. and waistcoats. And the one I was pointing out to, to the right side has all my pants in there, all my trousers in there. So that's yeah. basically how, how the space is used. Um, I'm occupying um, probably about, I'd say, if you kind of like added to each other. That's probably about six to eight meters of clothing space. Um, that's plenty. That's not that's too bad, plenty. I guess. Yeah, <laughs> and I'm, I need to, need to point out that this is only like fall and winter wardrobe. So the same yeah. amount sits down in the basement ah. um, and contains all the so summer clothing. In this video, we're only going to see your uh, yes. winter and like fall items. Exactly. Correct? Yes, okay, exactly. Because I mean, mm -hmm. actually, if you guys think that this is like a fun... Um, you know, fun fun show that we would probably um, do this another time with probably yeah, the, so the summer clothing. So I mean, if, at the end at the end of the day, let us know and then we'll figure it out. Yeah, but if we were gonna talk about your whole wardrobe, we would probably sit here for <laughs> yeah, about, for like forever, well, two hours. Yes, maybe well, <laughs> yes, but probably. Actually, so that, I mean, that, that, that actually yeah. brings me on to the first question from the community, and yes. and quite swiftly. So, yes. Uh, yes. do you ever have problems remembering everything you have, Dennis? Um, yeah, <laughs> not, uh, that's, that's, that's kind of funny, um, because if I think about it, um, I probably, I would have said like 10 minutes ago, mm -hmm. um, I would have said, no, absolutely not. I remember all the things I own. I remember where I bought them um, mm -hmm. and I remember where I stored them. Funny thing is, um, that's actually not true because I just, you know, went to the basement, did some laundry and came across a jacket I totally forgot I was owning. Um, it was basically a summer jacket I bought. That's crazy. At, yeah, I, I, mean, <laughs> I bought it at Suit Supply, obviously like I'd say one and a half years ago and it still has the tags. My only explanation for that is um, I was actually planning to bring it to the tailor to have probably sleeves shortened or something and I like totally forgot about it. So yes, I do forget about um, mm -hmm. clothing that I own. But um, well, in the majority of time, it's more about ties. So I've got like a okay. tie drawer, tie drawer to the right side here, uh, which has about like, let's say, roughly more than 200 ties. And yes, there are some ties I probably don't remember, um, but I try <laughs> to wear them um, as much as I can. So once a year, right? Once a year, yeah. So yeah, yeah. that's a good goal. I yeah, think. sometimes I do forget, but like, it's not common, not very common mm -hmm, practice. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, then... Um... How about we start with your wardrobe? Just show, yes. show us uh, some of your favorite pieces. Yes. So and then I guess... we might go into some uh, of the detail. 
Yes. So, so I guess um, we we start with sport jackets because um, mm-hmm. as you can see right now, I'm not much of a suit guy anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, so I love to pair, you know, different trousers, different jackets, different cardigans, ties, whatever you name it. Um, so it's best, obviously, to get a glimpse of what I'm uh, wearing on a daily basis. Um, to okay. start with the sport jackets. Yeah. So sport jackets are in here, mm-hmm. and as you can see, the closet, um, of course, it's contains two pieces or two kind of like style um, elements. So here go, here are the sport jackets and here's like the knit um, department. So containing fair isle sweater vests um, and cardigans and uh, turtlenecks, which um, are actually- a And all nicely way. folded. Yeah, they are, yeah, they need to be folded because yeah. like, otherwise if I open these, uh, these doors, then they just come out. Um, mm-hmm. So basically need to be a, a tidy um, bit uh, over here. So basically you can see jackets. Um, and as far as it concerns the number, um, I'd say roughly about 20 something, mm-hmm, 18 mm-hmm. or 20. Yeah, yeah. Um, different styles. Um, we've got herringbone tweed. We got um, houndstooth tweed. We got plain ones. We got ones made from um, camel. Um, so like cashmere. Interesting. Um, interesting. Tweed. So like a, so a lot, lot of, of different materials. Yes. But do you have a, a personal, this is another question from the community, for yeah. a sport coat, do you have a personal favorite style, like a configuration that you always go for? Yeah, um, I think you need to, um, yeah, I do have actually, and I'm probably mm-hmm. just getting um, one out, which yeah, kind of like exemplifies what I um, am hinting at. So this is something quite special. Um, the fabric is a loaded, so this is like something like a boiled wool. Um, mm-hmm. It's a heavy fabric. It's perfect for fall winter. This one mm-hmm. comes from a German brand called Anton Meyer. Um, mm-hmm. Shout out to the guys. No paid sponsoring here. Um, but I do love this jacket for two different reasons. First of all, it's a hard press three um, three button jacket, which looks awesome. That's very different about... for these days. Exactly, right? yeah, exactly. Because yeah, exactly. it's a traditional, a very traditional setup. Um, mm-hmm. But it totally works when you ha- like look at the like the overall aesthetics of the mm-hmm. garments. Um, so you got patch pockets. You got these bellow pockets here, mm-hmm. so there's a bit of room in here. You got the mm-hmm. flaps, you got matching buttons, um, and it's overall a quite nice, um, a, a very nice jacket, which goes a long way with corduroy pants, for example, flannel yeah. pants. You can even wear this with uh, with with denim, because I'm yeah. not much of a fan of denim anyway. But this one works perfectly with denim as well. And there's probably another thing to mention here, which is the back configuration. Cause, um, but a single if, fleet uh, or a yeah, single vent, sorry, single vent. Exactly. It has that's a single vent. Uh-huh. Um, that's rather an unusual setting for me because yeah. most of the times I go for double vent, but this has a single vent um, and it works perfectly well with okay. the overall aesthetics of the garment. Mm-hmm. So come to think about a traditional jacket, perfectly sitting for the fall winter. Yeah. Um, yeah. This is something I would recommend so, to go. So keeping, keeping it short uh, and brief, you like a, a traditional fit but with very casual elements or very casual details can we put it yeah. like this ah, yeah i think that's a good that's actually a, a good a good way to mm-hmm. summarize mm-hmm. it um, mm-hmm. and this is another great example mm-hmm. um of this approach to menswear mm-hmm. um so not talking about full suits but rather about sport jackets mm-hmm. um mm-hmm. what you can see here is a jacket by tailored by lopez aragon a um, <clears throat> spanish tailoring brand yeah um especially focus on the way the lapel is set here. So yeah. we've got no crochet um, over here, So, but the label is a lapel is going fully through um, mm-hmm. and joins mm-hmm. the collar. Mm-hmm. Um, another like peculiarity with this jacket is shirt cuffs. So that's, that's a very, very unusual. Mm-hmm. Exactly. That's very unusual. So, so they're also just... unlined. Is that correct? Yeah. Or, uh, yes. There are yes. lining in the sleeves. No, there is no, there's no lining whatsoever in the coat and neither in the sleeves, so it's mm-hmm. basically like a heavier form of, I'd say, shirt. Um, mm-hmm. But you can wear it with a tie, with a knit tie, with a woolen tie. You can go without a tie, um, and it works perfectly well with denim um, and sweat shoes, for example. Yeah. yeah. Um, but also works with flannel pants. Um, it works in my know. head. Yeah. Yes. Perfect. So this is, and the fabric itself is lovely. It has mm-hmm. this coarse, coarse, um, you know, the, the, the co- this coarse fabric, which, which mm-hmm. adds a, a lot, lot of texture, texture right? Exactly. exactly. And that's what I'm always about. <laughs> um, it's about texture and playing with texture, uh-huh. with different textures. So, okay. Interesting. And um, I've, I, now you've shown us two very yeah. rough uh, fabrics, very, very chunky fabrics for yes. sport coats. 
Is that also your preferred style of fabric or your preferred fabric for a sport coat? Or do you have a, a different uh, uh, a personal favorite fabric for a sport coat? Yeah, Because I mean, that's also another question from the community. Yeah, um, so basically, um, as you might already be aware of, I'm, and as Stefan already said it, um, mm -hmm. I'm like a big fan of textures. So, and textures do come with heavier fabrics. Um, having said that, there's uh, one example which I would like to show you guys, um, mm -hmm. which is this Boglioli jacket. Um, mm -hmm. Fabric has been uh, supplied by Loro Piana. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's it's a, a Zealander um, Merino. I think the label in here says, yeah, Zealander um, Merino yeah. wool. Yeah. So basically, this is not from a texture perspective, not very coarse, um, yeah. but it has still like a lot of depth due to the fact that it's um, a hairy bone, for example, um, first of all, um, and then the color. So it's like a melange thingy. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. A lot of color depth. Exactly, exactly. So you don't always need to go for like coarse fabrics or heavier fabrics, mm -hmm. but can achieve the same thing um, with like, you know, colored, visually colored um, fabrics like this one, uh, this example um, shows. Yeah. And also patch pockets, because like from my perspective, um, patch pockets are the way to go if you go casual. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it's still not, I mean, like this one is not as casual as the other one, mm -hmm. um, but like a good mixture of, you know, both being a bit of more like to, leaning to the tailored side yeah. um, of, of things that's still like able to be sported uh, with flannel patterns, okay. denim and stuff. So yeah. another good example. Yeah. Uh, interesting. That was Polioli, right? That was Polioli, yes. Yeah, interesting. Uh, you also have a lot of John Crockett, is that correct? Yes, yes. Uh, I have we, been... had a, we had a question from the community asking about the style of John Crockett and yep. um, especially very particular Uh, about the armholes. Maybe you can tell us something about the fit and just show one of the jackets. Yeah, yeah. So basically, um, about the jackets from John Crockett. I mean, the brand, you know, is deeply rooted in traditional English country wear. Um, mm -hmm. So think about Abraham Moon and Sons um, suits, coarse um, raglan coats and stuff. So basically, don't expect to get a suit supply fit when you go when you go there. Um, mm -hmm. As for the armholes. Yes, they are a bit more comfortable. Um, uh, the jackets are co cut a bit more comfortable to accommodate for, you know, their target group or their core target group. Um, mm -hmm. Personally, from my perspective, um, I don't think it's like too wide. Um, yeah. But you need to lean on your, well, your, your style preferences should lean a bit more towards, um, you know, well, I'd say loosely fitting garments. Um, I mean, you could still go to your alterations tailor and have them, you know, slimmed um, and taken mm -hmm. in, um, especially in the waist. Um, not so much for the armhole, but um, I don't really mind. And I do love their approach to style and to fabric styling. Um, so, yeah, it's, I mean, I love them. Um, I, mm -hmm. I regularly wear them, especially the regular coat. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, I've seen that a lot. Yeah, looks yeah, great. So, mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, you, you need to find out for yourself for sure. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But, yeah, they're cut on the wider side. Um, mm. And they have a lower armhole as well, yes. Okay, okay. Yeah, but yes. that doesn't necessarily uh, need to be a bad thing, I think. Absolutely. Absolutely uh, not. Are there any other suit brands that are the best? <laughs> It's literally well, the actually... Very general. Which <laughs> suit brands are the best? <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, like, how, how much time do you guys have? I mean, I could probably yeah. rant about, you know, like 10,000 different brands. But mm. um, if you boil it down, the best brand is the, the one that you can afford. Um, mm. And yes, always are... buy the best item that you can afford the exactly, best for your exactly. money. Uh -huh. Yeah, exactly. And um, the thing is that if you if you're just starting into menswear, um, then there's the, a good a good approach to things is probably um, just to try things out. And that mm. means rather start buying on eBay and rather start buying used garments from different mm. brands mm. just to find out which cut fits you better than another one. Um, mm -hmm. And it's not so much about, you know, the brand itself. It's more about their production philosophy um, and how they style their garments. So I've mm -hmm. been, well, and I'm still, I'm still um, buying a lot of stuff um, on eBay. That's something because, I was going to ask. Exactly. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because like probably a good example for, for this approach um, is this jacket here. Mm -hmm. So this is Cesare Atolini from Napoli. That's um, awesome. Mm -hmm. it is, In one it's, word. <laughs> it's, <laughs> Gorgeous. it's actually made from 100% cashmere. Um, I can't say which mill supplied the fabric, um, but mm -hmm. actually I do love the design. It has um, like on the shoulder construction, basically you would, you know, attribute 
um, like a softer construction to mm -hmm. jackets hailing from, from Napoli, especially. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but that is not always the case because Ces um, Cesare Artolini um, uses to tailor his garments with a bit more structure, both in the yeah. chest and both in the shoulders. I yeah. do love this, um, given that the fabric, um, design-wise, is a bit more traditional. Um, so that perfectly fits the bill here with the shoulder construction. And as you well. actually got that one from from eBay, like yes. just by searching or thrifting from yes. from eBay. Okay, yes, that's incredible. Yes. Uh -huh. yes, I mean it's a fifty regular. Mm -hmm. um, so this was a tryout, mm -hmm. um, and having said that, I paid I think about roughly two hundred fifty, two hundred sixty mm -hmm. euros, mm -hmm. um, and had the chance to give it back if it weren't mm -hmm. fitting. Um, mm -hmm. which it actually um, totally is. It's like, it fits right like a glove, right out mm -hmm. of the box. Mm -hmm. um, so not a single thing to change here. Um, and this is probably a recommendation that I could get uh, you guys. Um, anyhow, try, try different brands and try to see what works for you. Um, and then actually the best brand um, is the brand that works good for you and is in your yeah. money bracket. And, and um, also a recommendation I always get yeah. uh, give is, don't buy the most expensive thing uh, exactly. in the first place or uh, when, you, yeah. when you're just starting your wardrobe. Yeah. It just doesn't make sense. Uh, you, maybe you'll think it'll last a lifetime, but at some point you are going to get rid of it. Yeah. And in the beginning, it's going to be a lot or earlier than you actually think it will yeah. be. Yeah. 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 yeah, and probably that's one of the principles um, that I would uh, you know, live by mm -hmm. at least um, having come to this conclusion, like after buying stuff, selling stuff, buying mm -hmm. stuff. Um, I mean, I, we all love sales items, right? We all love to get, uh, get a good Absolutely. bargain on stuff. Yes. But the thing is, um, you eventually right. regret it. You eventually regret buying pieces that you are not going to wear. Because, mm -hmm. you know, like who needs a blue jacket with a yellow overcheck and like a lilac Prince of Wales thingy over it just because it's <laughs> cheap? Yeah. You know, this is like something, I mean, if you have, like, if you mastered the basics, so if you have like three good fitting gray jackets, it's two blues and a brown one, you could probably think about adding mm -hmm. another piece, mm -hmm. just like mm -hmm. the fuck you piece. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, I don't know if, you know, this money is spent wisely just because something is cheap. And you know, also in the beginning, you won't have covered all the basics. That's the point. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. But, and I mean, yes, it's a boring principle. Yeah. Come to think about it. It's yeah. a boring principle, yeah. but it gets you a long way. Mm -hmm. And then that's basically it. Let's let's wrap the uh, jackets up. Uh, but yep. while we're on the subject of uh, basics, do you have like show us your three favorites from the jackets, from the winter jackets? Three recommendations. Three recommendations. So yeah, um, that should be shouldn't be like uh, that shouldn't um, there, there shouldn't be a gap in any wardrobe. Yeah. So a great fitting gray mm. herringbone Harris tweed sport coat. This one coming from Spire and Mecca, um, based out of Canada. Um, mm. That's their Napoli fit, so broader lapels here, um, patch pockets, um, four buttons configuration, yeah. non-working by the way. For me, Napoli. this is like, yeah. this is the ultimate definition of New England style or something. Yeah, like that. exactly. And it works amazing. in so, yeah, yeah, and it works in so many configurations. Mm -hmm. I mean, picture it being worn with a white shirt, blue pullover, um, or blue fair isle, um, mm -hmm. and jeans. Mm -hmm. Denim, for example. You can wear this one with white flannel pants. You can wear this mm -hmm. with, I know, I don't know, olive twill pants. So there's a lot, a lot of things you can wear this mm -hmm. with. Um, and given that the fabric is on, on the heavier side, it has a lot of well, nice drape, actually. Mm -hmm. So it falls beautifully um, mm -hmm. and should be sitting in your wardrobe, something like that, should be sitting um, mm -hmm. as a basic um, um, piece um, for any man's wardrobe, actually. Yeah. Yeah. So this is number one. Um, and I'm continuing the boring theme here with a blue one. So this is a blue, again, it's cashmere, um, a blue jacket. Um, same configure, uh, basically same configuration um, that you saw on the other one. This one has a bit more formal pockets. So we get um, slanted pockets with flaps. I'm always tucking them in. Um, mm -hmm. Broader lapel. Do that we too. Get brown horn buttons here. Um, so this is, should be, it, it doesn't need to be cashmere. Um, it could mm -hmm. be like a merino wool or something as well. Um, I'm a sucker for cashmere. That's why it's cashmere. Um, mm -hmm. But like a blue sport coat should sit in your wardrobe just as well. It's a great um, piece for basic styling. does go with a range of different colors, fabrics, choices, and um, whatever you make. You, you never look... Um, you can't untidy. go wrong with it. Exactly. Yeah. You can't mm -hmm. go wrong with that. So this should be in your wardrobe as well. And coming to a third piece, um, I'd probably go for this one. Um, mm -hmm. 
I need to probably mm. yeah, get out one limitation because as you can see, the buttons here um, on the flaps, um, they're very traditional. So Some it depends on if you're a fan of um, traditional English style and traditional English clothing, at yeah. least from an aesthetics perspective. Um, then you could probably do just the same that I did, you know, with this little creases down here, um, leather um, buttons as well. Um, but you don't need to because actually this works pretty well with like horn buttons, for example, mm. um, as well. So and it would be more, more versatile, right? With, exactly. Uh, it would buttons. be a bit more yeah. versatile. Um, mm. But given that the fabric itself is a vintage fabric, um, it's a vintage um, wool, um, you know, I thought about why not go in the full way. Um, and doing just that and adding yeah. well, yeah. leather buttons. So, I but, get yeah. the idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so basic um, brown with a blue over check, <clears throat> um, tweed jacket, mm -hmm. goes well with denim, goes well mm -hmm. with flannel pants, goes well, which will, goes okay. basically well with anything. Yeah, yeah. Perfect. I think those are three excellent choices. And, um, but I, I feel like we need to move on to like yes. maybe your trousers or yes. uh, your shirts. You decide, trousers or shirts? I think uh, shirts, probably. Yeah, shirts. of course. Let's do that. Um, mm -hmm. So you shouldn't be able to see me right now. No. Um, <laughs> but I'm only... Um, so I got, like, down the hall, if you want so. Um, and I'm continuing to, to babble just to make sure that you guys are not missing and I have not been running away in the meantime. But I'm yeah. just grabbing three different shirts um, to show what, uh, you know, my shirt That's collection That's excellent because like we also got the question which uh, you're... Ooh, let me check. What's the best shirt brand you've ever owned in so, your entire um, life in the well, world? Well, actually, um, I'm not much of a shirt expert, um, admittedly. Why is that? Because I used to work for a company, a made-to-measure company based um, in Düsseldorf, um, Kobe & Co, respectively, the Sons of Several Row. So I, like 90%, 95% of all my shirts um, come from these guys and they fit me well um, mm -hmm. after, you know, like a bit of trial and error process which is totally normal for these kind of things. But um, yeah, I do wear their shirts basically on a daily basis. Um, so we've got a white one. That's your starting shirt. Um, in any case, get a good fitting white t-shirt gets you like through probably 99% of all mm -hmm, occasions mm -hmm, mm -hmm. where you want to wear a shirt. Mm -hmm. Another one, which is like a, at least for me, um, a base layer for probably mm -hmm. any outfit is a blue striped shirt. So blue stripes mm -hmm. on a white ground, um, I mean, it depends on if you like French cuffs. I do like to wear French cuffs. I need to come a bit closer. That looks like a fairly white stripe, like something. Um, yeah, it's a Bengal it's a, stripe. Or, yeah, it's mm -hmm. a Bengal stripe. Yeah, yeah it's Bengal, a Bengal stripe. Exactly. Works well with a range of ties. You can go mm. with a, you know, printed tie. You can go with silk. You can go with wool. Yeah. Could have a, um, you know, could be plain. Could be shantung silk. Whatever you want. Yeah. Um, works well with the with the stripe setting. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, another basic one you should definitely have in your wardrobe. And then coming mm -hmm. to like shirt brands mm -hmm. that really, really, really do it well. Um, this one is from Kamesi Men. Shout out mm -hmm. to the guys. Um, and that's probably <clears throat> my, my best fitting shirt um, given, uh, well, actually that it's entirely handmade. So mm -hmm. um, anything you can see here is basically made by hand. Um, sleeves are set in by hand. Uh, we got beautiful stitching. We got crowdfoot stitching for the buttons. Um, the, it's, it's made from a, a denim fabric, uh, which has been yeah. generously supplied by uh, my friends from, um, from an it Italian mill. Mm -hmm. um, so basically, this is like probably my most favorite best, shirt. Yeah, I get it. Yeah. Um, best best fitting of all one. worlds. Mm -hmm. Exactly. It has like some nice shirring over here. Um, so yeah, if you if you're in the market for a super well fitting shirt, and actually mm -hmm. the customer service from Kamesi Man is out, um, mm -hmm. well, is out out there. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, I recommend checking these guys out. They really know what they're doing. Uh, someone would like to see a close up of the shirt. Could you get it a bit closer yeah. just to see sure. the texture? Yes. And the someone is actually Tim. Shout out to Tim. Hey Tim. <laughs> yeah, lovely. I love the patina on denim shirts. Amazing. Yes, yes, that's uh, that's actually mm. one thing um, that you you're trying to achieve over time because and mm. this is basically one of the principles that I go by. Um, mm. You know, getting dressed up in the morning um, is is something. It's, it's like I mean, it's it's a routine for me, right? Um, I was going to ask that too because we have yeah. a question from the from the community, which is. Yeah. Let me check. Oh shit. How do you plan your outfits? Let's go ahead. 
Well, actually, oh, really? um, it's, it's, it's basically, I'm, I'm starting with one item that could be pants, it could be a shirt, it could be a tie, it could be the jacket, and just build the other things around it. So this morning, um, I was, uh, well, I was actually, I, w- I would wanted to wear this um, cashmere piece by Cesare Artolini Napoli and just thought about, okay, how to combine it. And then, you know, I, I opened the tie drawer and actually mm-hmm. this beautiful um, Amide Hadelin um, tie, ha- mm-hmm. Adela, um, mm-hmm. Tie cut from a, um, I think it is a tweet from Abraham Moonsons. Um, goes very well with it, given that you can, you know, kind of like um, build it up with green corduroy pants um, and this beautiful plum colored um, cardigan, um, which comes from uh, the good guys at Crema. Um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So yes, uh, basically it's layering. It's layering um, at its at, at its best. I mean, you got to decide whether it's good or not, but um, for me, at least it works. Uh, so adding a bit of color, um, you know, playing with textures. Um, and yeah, to sum it up, it's start with one piece and build the other things, pick the yeah. other things around it. So pretty logical, actually. Yeah, yeah actually, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, perfect. Um, so what else do we get? Yeah, we, we, I think we've covered the shirts and we covered the jackets. Yes. So we should, before we finally get to the shoes, because we also have like yeah. um, a few requests on those. Let's yes. see the pants as well, because we also yeah. have a, maybe we can start with one of those questions. Do you have any yeah. thoughts on Natalino pants? So maybe you can get us a pair of Natalino pants. Yes, so actually the one pant that I'm wearing today is a Natalino corduroy trouser. Um, you can see it features plates. Um, that's the basic, well, that's my preferred um, setting for pants. They, I mean, this is like a single pleat. Um, I yeah. do own pants that had double pleats as well. Is there um, anything but, you prefer uh, on the pleats? Because that was a very quick question we just got uh, um, in the chat. Well, actually, Forward, backwards, not, double, really. Double, not really. No, not really. No, uh-huh. not really. I'd say probably 75% of my pants feature single pleats, but I do have double pleats as well. Um, it's, I think, you know, it's just like sometimes I go for the, the one thing and sometimes I go for the other thing. So yeah. no yeah. real, no okay. real preferring in, in any case. No, of course, um, I always nice. make sure, yeah, sorry. So I always make sure my pants have uh, cuffs as well because I'm probably, you know, mm-hmm. on the taller side, so mm-hmm. roughly about um, 187 centimeters in height. Um, and these pleats, well, pleats and cuffs do come in handy because mm-hmm. um, you can see that these sit well on the shoes. So they add a bit of visual depth to it um, and they add a bit of, you know, kind of like a, a punch um, to an outfit. So anytime I can get pants or I can, can get cuffs on my trousers, yeah, um, yeah. I go for this option. The drape oh. is just um, a lot more preferable, right? Yes, exactly, exactly. Mm. I mean, and the added weight, the added weight kind mm. of like, you know, services the pen and helps the pen stay in a bit more like, let's say, uncreased, mm. which is not mm. the case with this one because I've been wearing it all day and I've been lying on the sofa with it so bear with me, um, mm-hmm, it's not like mm-hmm. freshly pressed. But then again, um, actually, I, I'm, I'm totally fond of the concept that, you know, you should wear your clothes and not the other way around. So I'm mm-hmm. not, you know, in a museum. I'm not like no, on the wall no. to be admired. Like but I live in my cars. clothes. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I live in my clothes. Clothes should be worn. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And so, I mean, they get warm, they get creases. But, mm. you know, who cares anyway? Um, I got mm. another, you know, different things to worry about and not creases mm. on my pants. So um, I'm just stepping out here and getting another pair of pants for you guys. Just mm-hmm. to make sure that you have a grasp of what's sitting in there as well. Yeah. So I think okay. like a boring choice again, um, but a very sensible choice, which is this pant. So this is a gray. Um, Did you check it out? It's, I think it's a shark skin. Um, it's a shark skin gray pant. Um, yeah. It features everything I love about pants. So we got cuffs here. Um, fabric mm. is definitely lighter. So mm. if you want to pair it um, with a sports jacket, I would, wouldn't probably recommend going for a mm. heavy tweed with this one. Mm. Um, but probably, you know, kind of like more like the Boyoli jacket that I just mm. showed you guys. Mm. So side adjusters as well. Um, on this one, we got pleated um, pockets. You can, you can see the stitching, beautiful stitching in here. And this actually, I think if I remember correctly, this is from Tsaremba. Um, it's a bespoke pant um, from the Polish workshop. Um, and I love to wear it. Beautiful drape. Um, Tsaremba, wow, that's incredible. Yeah, yeah. Lovely. It, mm-hmm. it, features, um, it features buttons 
as a fly for the fly. Mm -hmm. um, so all the sartorial details yeah, um, yeah. you would want to look for in a pair of gray, okay. um, great and gray fitting pants. So yeah. this is the way to go. Add some to your wardrobe because this is a stable and it basically works I, with anything. I, this is something, you know, I've never thought about. Uh, shark skin trousers. I, I wouldn't yeah. uh, have picked those, but... Well, what you Actually, say makes sense, you know? Yeah, it might, it, it, it's not, you know, if you come close to... If you approach this fabric mm -hmm. and if you come close to it, you, pro you see that mm -hmm. it has some texture and some yeah. visual depth. But yeah. from afar, it just looks like any basic, you know, gray pants. Which yeah. is a good thing at that. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So yeah, but, one of these great pants, and probably I get us another one. I need to one. interrupt you again. Yes. Dennis. No. Go uh, ahead. You were <laughs> you were just talking about Zaremba, which is a bespoke yeah. tailor, and we exactly. also have the question um, about your experience with bespoke tailors. Do you have any apart from Zaremba? What yes. else do you have? Yes. So um, actually, I've been um, I've been doing a lot of stuff uh, with my friend Julian Julian Weyer. Yeah, yeah. Um, he's a German guy. He's a friend of mine. He's a tailor as well, a very skillful one. Um, and he probably tailored my most favorite suit of all time, um, which is the one I'm showing you right now. <laughs> Perfect. So this is a brown three-piece suit. Um, and again, you can see by the way we, we tailored mm -hmm. or Julian tailored the pockets. I mean, mm -hmm. that's, you know, the beauty of this book. You get to decide on anything that is on your suit, within your suit, around your suit. So basically, that's the most could, favorite. Could you bring it a bit closer so we can yes. also appreciate the, the texture and the pattern? Oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. So what we got here, um, mm -hmm. it's, I mean, it's a bit rumpled. But, you know, we've got like a, yeah. roll, a three roll two, so a very high setup for for the lapel, we got two waistcoats. We got single-breasted one, mm -hmm. which shows here, and we got a double-breasted one as well. Mm -hmm. And we've got like Not to be worn at the same time, by the way. Exactly. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Only if you're feeling very, very cold and don't mind looking rubbish. Mm -hmm. So yeah, this is like a super beautiful suit. It fits perfectly. Anytime I put this thing on, you know, I just feel like a, a king, basically. Awesome. Um, mm -hmm. it, it, it has all the right details. And then apart from that, it just fits beautifully. It, it, it doesn't crease where it shouldn't. Um, mm -hmm. it, it drapes beautifully. Mm -hmm. um, and the pants are sitting very, very high at top. So these mm -hmm. pants, whenever I wear them, these, they are probably sitting right here. So this is like really, really high, which mm -hmm. is my preferred mode of, um, of trousers because they just drape so beautifully and you got like a long, Line for the, and you probably the wear them with uh, suspenders in that case, exactly. so they drape yes. from the shoulders, right? Perfect. Exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. So they are worn with um, suspenders and braces, um, and yeah, the, the suit just looks beautiful. And I mean, I, I only can recommend if you mm -hmm. have the time, um, check Julian out. Um, probably we can, um, you know, kind of like link his account um, in the show notes, um, and mm -hmm. you can see this thing and this beast being worn um, a couple of times on my account. So if you yeah. want to get a grip of what it looks like being one, um, just hop over to mm -hmm. my account. Of yes. course, awesome. And now and, we're, we're, we're yeah. actually um, getting close to the end here because we, yes. got, we got, let me check, four questions left. Yes. Um, have we finished the trousers yet, or are you are you where are you going to show us uh, another pair? I, I mean, I could. I mean, if if in, if the interest still persists, uh, then I let me check. Maybe we can yeah. combine it with a question. Sure. Um, do you have like? Yeah, you could actually show us. Um, yeah. I know which which pair of trousers you could show us, because there's one question. What's your yeah. latest acquisition? So the latest acquisition in the mm -hmm. trouser department. Um, should be another pair of Natalinos, actually. Mm -hmm. um, so, a charcoal gray pair made of heavy flannel. This one here. Um, which is like another recommendation I can totally get you guys. Um, because yeah. A, the brand is great. The cut is great for these pants. Um, it does feature all the right details. It sits high atop the waist. So, I'm wearing this with braces um, as well. Um, and the, the fabric itself drapes beautifully. And given the, you know, the rougher, rougher, like, let's say, coarse identity of the fabric, um, mm -hmm. it works beautifully with um, tweed pants. And like for, for the, for the gray, in the gray parts, um, gray trouser department, um, I'm always reaching for darker tones um, just because these pair more beautifully 
um, than lighter ones do in contrast, at least for me. So um, all my gray pants are rather in this department mm -hmm. color wise um, than like in the lighter department. If, it, that's if interesting. I go lighter. Yeah, that's yeah. just something yeah, that's yeah. like a personal, like let's say style quirk. Um, and it has a, a added value, which is, I mean, these are bad weather pants, right? Mm -hmm. You would wear flannel mm -hmm. in, in bad weather um, mm -hmm. circumstances and you easily soil your pants when walking through snow. So, mm -hmm. I mean, if you get like darker pants, it's correct. You know, yeah, yeah. Of, stains of, doesn't show as much. It's funny because um, the pants that I wear most of the time are actually pretty light gray. But interesting. Yeah. So we also got our, our, our parts where we don't agree. <laughs> yes. <laughs> finally. Yeah, finally something. <laughs> I thought you were a brother from another mother. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> not a twin okay. then. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so anything show else? Us the, the jacket as well, because you can actually show us the entire acquisition, the entire suit. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. Well, yeah. actually, so this is, I mean, this is like just the... Oh, this, the, those were... Uh, trousers. Uh, yes. Yeah, I get it. So those were... But probably another, um, another, like, let's say, fun suit and fun acquisition, mm -hmm. um, you know, just conclude it. <laughs> um, yeah would probably be this one here. So, and now prepare for something like really vintage. Um, this one. This is a heavy, heavy, heavy tweet. It's uh, sorry sorry to interrupt you again, Dennis. Yeah. Uh, we yeah. have this issue that you're on the lower part of the screen where there's also the, the chat, you know? And so the yes. chat is like an uh, overlaying uh, the, 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 uh, the video. So maybe right. you can bring the... The, the items, the garments closer and also to the, uh, from your side, the left end of the, of the camera. Yeah, yeah, like that, like that. Perfect. Okay, and so what we, what, what we do have here. So mm -hmm. this is a bulletproof tweet, probably about mm -hmm. 600 grams, um, you know, per square meter. Um, it, it's like, it's, it's thorn proof. You could basically, you know, run through the hatches and, you know, the garment would just laugh. Um, as you can see, the setting is very traditional. We got like a broad lapel. So maybe this suit is dating back to the, to the 70s, roughly. Can't mm -hmm. really tell, but I think it might be um, the 70s. We got like little pleats on the patch pockets. Up this is something here. you're pretty particular and, uh, about, right? Like yes, pleats yes, on the yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, you know, it, you know it's, it's, it, it fits the garment and it fits, yeah. you know, the intended use because this is no business suit, right? Mm -hmm. This is something mm -hmm. you would wear probably to a country in, you know, in a more like rural country setting. Yeah. Um, yeah. So pants are very, very wide in the leg, given that it, they are, you know, hailing back from the 70s. Um, mm. You can see them. You can see, you can't see it right now, but hop over to my account and you see this thing worn as well. Mm -hmm. And another mm -hmm. peculiarity for this one is look at the action back. Oh, wow. That's incredible. <laughs> so we got this half belt here. We got this yeah. half belt hand creases here as well. Mm. Um, so, yeah, this is not your standard suit. This is not a standard configuration, and I wouldn't recommend, you know, shopping for one if you just start building a wardrobe because this is like really Absolutely. out there. Um, and you, at particular. least from my perspective, it mm -hmm. takes a bit of panache to wear such a thing. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean, if you and arrive, this is also a at, shade of gray, or is it just? A, yeah, it's a bluish. It's it's, it's actually a bluish, I, like my suit, right? <laughs> yes, yes. Okay, so yeah. I I I I describe it. I mean, it has flax, right? You can see mm -hmm. it probably. It has mm -hmm. these these white spots, flax. So a bit of a Donegal um, kind of like setting here. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, it's like a, a grayish blue, a bluish mm -hmm. gray. Yeah, you, yeah. You got to decide. So this was a fun acquisition on eBay, 75 euros um, total. Mm -hmm. Would you describe it as, would you give it an epoch, like a, a certain vintage? Is it the 50s, 40s? Um, I mean, you know, touching by 60s, the... 60s, right? Yeah, I mean, judging by the cut, it could be end of 60s, early 70s. Yeah, because, yeah, you know, because the labels are a bit too wide for 60s, so yeah, I agree, yeah. probably 70s, yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, but I can't really tell, actually. No. I mean, it's the tailor was Burton, mm -hmm. Burton's of England. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, but, you know, details are um, and, for low. Um, the gorge was pretty low, is that correct? Yes, uh, yes, yeah. Do you, do you prefer... Um, do you prefer low gorge? Do you like a higher gorge? Or do you think it's just it has to fit the overall aesthetics? I think it has to fit the overall aesthetics, really. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, if you go for, you know, a bit more of a vintage look, then probably go lower with the gorge. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I wouldn't say that there's like one preferred method. It depends on the garment. It depends mm -hmm. on the fabric. Um, and, you know, if you want to go for like, let's say, a more contemporary fit, a more modern look, get the mm -hmm. gorge up higher. Um, but if you're more like into traditional, you know, the traditional setup, do it a bit lower. But actually, yeah. it takes, I couldn't really say, I couldn't pin it down to one or three or five centimeters, but it's more like 
you get you know an understanding having seen and having worn mm. a lot of suits and jackets over the years you get an understanding what fits your physique yeah. um what fits the aesthetics of the garment um and yeah you eventually arrive at something you feel comfortable with and that's actually the most important thing mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah okay uh, let's <laughs> let's get to the opposite question yes is there a garment that you have owned for the longest time uh, which is the garment um, so my oldest suit, probably, mm. um, I'm just, you know, going through it. It's probably should be, I think, this one. Um, and I'm, I'm going to explain you guys why it's the oldest suit or by, by what I can tell. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. So you see, we've got the action back here as well. I mean, no please up here, but you can see these creases um, up here. So they give a bit of more movement. Um, and we got the half belt. Why mm -hmm. is this something um, that is probably like my most, the, like the, the, the oldest garment in my closet? Just because I totally went nuts on the lapels. Wow. I mean, <laughs> look at these lapels. They are, I think, yeah. probably like 14 and that's a half centimeters. That's badass. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's badass. Um, and trust me, I wouldn't do, you know, I wouldn't kind of like get lapels this wide mm -hmm. with such a suit, um, you know, if well, I well, were well, to well, order well, well. new I always, one. I always say uh, uh, a man's willy is relative to the width of his lapels. Yeah, well, yeah, what does yeah. that tell? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you can see here we got pleats as well. So we got like a fancy undercolor here okay, yeah. um, set in, a, in an orange felt. I think uh -huh. I have a you know, something stitched in as well. So here you can see. Oh, you really went uh, all out, right? Yeah, I went all out. So this is basically just to show you guys that, you know, style evolves over time. Uh -huh. um, and you eventually, you know, you start with something because you think this this is cool. And like after, I mean, I still love to wear the suit. Um, so it's still out on a regular basis. But come to think about it, I wouldn't, you know, kind of like construct the garment as it is. Um, mm -hmm, if I mm -hmm. were to order it right now again, um, I would certainly... Um, kind of like, you know, reduce the lapel width. Um, I would probably not. This one has a waistcoat as well and only features three mm. buttons. So um, Maybe you can get it a bit higher as well. Again, it's just yes. because of the chat, yes. which is a bit uh, annoying. So you can see here. I, I'm, only... I'm sorry, guys. I love the chat. I absolutely adore it. But it's just <laughs> in the way you get it, right? <laughs> so we okay. got like three buttons. Um, yeah. No, we got two buttons, actually. <laughs> so oh, we wow. got two buttons. Wow. So the th so the third didn't come off. It never was there. Um, uh, and how do you keep the uh, bottom button open? So you just close the top one? <laughs> yeah, you just, yeah, you just close wow. the top one. So another thing, you know, I, I tried out um, yeah. and definitely wouldn't recommend doing. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, no, I, you know, I do. Do you still, I still wear it? Do you still wear it? I do it. Yeah, I do oh, okay. it. I do. Mm -hmm. I do. I think there was one picture of um, Fabio Atanasio back in the days where he was mm. wearing such a two-button vest as well. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I think it's safe to assume that he saw it on me and he liked it and he mm. copied it. Mm. Um, yeah, no, just kidding. That's... Um, <laughs> okay. But I mean, I like you for a second there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I mean, I still love the, I still love it. I love the suit. I love okay. the fabric. It has a lot of depth as well. It works great. Um, you know, the blue jacket on its own works great. With, like, let's say, denim for, for yeah. as well. Yeah. Pants are riding high. So, yeah. like, yeah, the, the oldest garment. Um, one of the first made-to-measure suits um, mm -hmm. I constructed, and um, I have been owning this probably like for ten years, roughly. Mm -hmm. Wow, think. that is a lot. Yeah, yeah interesting. So yeah, so, so we, we all start we just somewhere. Got, we just got a question through the chat. So we got three yes. questions left, and I include this one. Um, do you have a favorite designer, Dennis? A favorite designer? Um, mm -hmm. I guess <clears> that <throat> brands would probably also. Um, be be valid or uh, be a valid answer? Yeah, I think, you know, if it comes to designer, it probably is Ralph Lauren. Mm. Um, why is that? Because his aesthetics are just, you know, they are like totally, um, they're like, I, I, I do love it. I do love them. They're so consistent. Mm. Um, and I think what, what he managed to do over the past, I, I don't know how long he's been in business, but I think like 50 years or something. Um, and his consistency, consistency is outstanding. So, you could basically see an ad from dating back from the 19, like let's say 1980s, 1990s, and you would instantly recognize this is a Ralph Lauren ad without being, mm. you know, having it imprinted mm. on the ad itself, just because mm. he's playing that drum. Um, so yeah, favorite designer of all time, probably Ralph Lauren. And I would also. probably agree with that. Trying to think yeah. of something more out of the ordinary, maybe something uh, 
that wouldn't be as obvious, but there's nothing wrong with the obvious sometimes, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. I mean, you know, these guys, I mean, you could probably add, you know, Alan Flosser, which mm -hmm. has ha has been having a huge influx on the men's wear mm -hmm. scene um, and is an, a respected voice in the industry. I mean, you could make, probably name like another 10 to 15 guys mm -hmm. um, who, mm -hmm. who really shaped the, the, you know, the whole men's wear scene. But if yeah. I were to boil it down to one person only, it certainly would be Rod Lauren. Okay, okay. Let's do yeah. and and like it's crazy, guys. So the time we were just talking, there were new two new questions. So let's uh, answer them also as well before we uh, get on with the next regular question. Um, do, 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 do we feel older with suits when we put them on, more mature? Um, I, I probably wouldn't say you, you feel older, but um, you know, there's you know there goes a a a, a famous setting which is you know the, the suit is something like armor you put on so mm -hmm. something that shields you from you know from the outside mm -hmm. um and what i actually um can totally underwrite uh, and subscribe is that whenever i put on a well-fitting garment be it pants be it jacket be it a, a suit it makes me feel good which mm -hmm. then translates um mm -hmm. you know to you know kind of like my self-consciousness reaches out to people not being arrogant yeah. that is not the thing but it makes you feel good and then this is something that people recognize as you feel okay. at home with yourself you feel at home with your dress mm -hmm. um and especially this this is this holds especially true for suits mm -hmm. because you know you get treated better this is something that's that I, the I, point I, yeah yeah so, so so i mean imagine situation you arrive at the airport for example mm -hmm. and you know you've mm -hmm. got like probably three guys passing through your door mm -hmm. and i would say that at least 66 percent of the guys will keep the door open for you if you're wearing a nice absolutely, suit absolutely. and a tie. So this uh, is something it's, about... I think uh, I would absolutely agree on that with you. Although I have to disagree on the first part because I think I'm always the same. I don't really yeah. care what I wear um, and it doesn't really change my mindset. But yeah. uh, wearing a suit has so many advantages. Why shouldn't you use these advantages? There's yeah. just like going to a car dealership. Uh, yeah. If you go there in a tracksuit, you won't be served as good yeah. as if you ought to wear yeah. a suit and a tie, yeah. or let's yeah. say and a, I mean, an appropriate combination, something that looks yeah, yeah. And I mean, you know, if you uh, if you if, if you look at it, yeah, mm -hmm. if you look at it, I mean, you you could say, hey, why don't why, why don't we treat people all mm -hmm. equally? Because um, mm -hmm. this is you know some this is humankind. You you exactly. would probably. I mean, this is just, you know, it's this psychology is principle. It's psychology. So, mm -hmm. I mean, if you know that you can use it to, to your advantage mm -hmm. and it doesn't necessarily mean that you're like an arrogant bastard, um, why should you? It doesn't you know, have a disadvantage for anyone else, you know? Exactly. So, and, and, and also yeah. I might add, and also I might add that, you know, it's a representation of that, of, of how you treat things. Because, you know, mm -hmm. if I'm in a business setting and I'm mm -hmm. meeting up with someone and we're talking figures, mm -hmm. um, Go in there like in a swim, swim, like bathing suit, swimming trunks, and flip -flop. Yeah. swim yeah. trunks would probably, you know, tell him, okay, he's not taking this serious, mm -hmm. seriously. Mm -hmm. So, why he's showing up like that? So, mm -hmm. I mean, by getting dressed and by getting dressed <clears throat> properly for the right occasion, mm -hmm. um, you just show respect towards the people you're dealing with, mm -hmm. um, be it in a bank setting, be it in a business meeting, be it, I don't know, on a wedding, for example. Mm -hmm. So I mean, yeah. if your guest, you know, if your host tells you, it's like for the, especially for a wedding, if your host says, "Hey, come as you are," that doesn't mean you should show up in flip flops. It just means, okay, you probably can skip the tie if you don't feel like wearing a tie. But please, you know, treat your host with respect in respect to the event that you're attending. Um, and if it's black tie, it's black tie. It's not like, okay, I'm I'm like a super inventive guy. I'm mm -hmm. wearing a, you know, I'm don't know, I'm wearing a smoking jacket but then i put on denim pants and you know some kind of trainers and yeah. it's just it's a bit disrespectful um and i wouldn't i wouldn't recommend it and i you know and that's a basic principle be respective towards people so and show mm -hmm. that in dress show that in mm -hmm. manners be polite mm -hmm. so stuff like that and dress is just another form of expressing your mm -hmm. um that you take things seriously and that you treat people right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah i agree uh, the second question was, um, do we think that black is the most overrated color in menswear? One, <laughs> two, three, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so black. Um, yeah. The only occasions, the only occasions are, that I wear black is on the shoes, because uh -huh. black shoes, I mean, they're like a stable. Um, I would wear a black mid-tie, 
because mm-hmm. this is something mm-hmm. the men's wear crowd loves. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I would wear black in a you know in a, a dinner setting, so smoking, thing smoking. This I would add a funeral or something like a that. funeral. Yeah, yeah. Other I mean, I haven't that. been attending much um, mm-hmm. much of uh, many funerals in the past, thankfully. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, that's probably the fourth um, fourth event you would reach for a black suit. But mm-hmm. anything apart from that, stay clear of black, um, especially for suits, mm-hmm. um, especially for shirts, because I've mm-hmm. seen a lot of guys mm-hmm. wearing mm-hmm. black shirts, mm-hmm. which just looks off. Doesn't work. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, it doesn't work. Um, yeah, that's it. I mean, black is a great color for for girls, actually. Yeah, so it's very elegant. It's, very elegant. But the point is, I think there's one exception to the rule, and that is. If you only wear, or if your wardrobe only consists of black, gray, and white garments, I wouldn't do that personally. But yep. uh, I guess that's Same. the only that's the only exception to the rule. Same. So yep. um, before we continue with the last two questions, yeah, um, you can get a drink, Dennis, because right now I'd like to say thank you so much uh, for everyone on this chat. We're still at over 40 uh, viewers, which is amazing, wow. <laughs> and <laughs> And what I really, and we're almost going for an hour. And what I'd really like to point out is how uh, cultured and how polite the chat is. There's no like negative negativity on the comments. It's very positive. I really like the attitude of all the viewers. Thank you so much. Yeah. And Thanks, now guys. we continue. That that was your chance to have a drink. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers to you. <laughs> okay. Um, so finally, or almost finally. What's your most valuable piece? And I would like to to break that down into the price, but also what it means to you. Yeah. Um, so most valuable from yeah, you, you can have like you know different different view viewpoints on that. Mm-hmm. Um, when it comes down to price, it probably is a bespoke garment, right? Um, so I, I showed you the brown suit, which is mm-hmm. like the most valuable in terms of what I spent for it. Mm-hmm. Um, and then again. Um, you know, this the, the amount of money that went into um, creating this masterpiece is a is a good level or a good measurement of how much time uh, went into that thing and how much dedication. And I mean, Julian, you know, like spent like 60 hours doing this thing. And in mind, it's basically it's all hand tailored. So there's a lot of dedication. There's mm-hmm. a lot of love getting into this garment. And this is at least one measurement. And um, you know, to, <coughs> sorry to point out. How much love it is is money. So yeah, this is the most expensive one from yeah. a um, no a money perspective. Okay, get it. And is there anything you attach um, emotions with that could be um, also a valuable garment? Yeah, I mean emotions. Um, that's a good. I mean, probably I could go back to the brown suit as well because this mm-hmm. was my first my first bespoke commission with mm-hmm. Julian. Um, so yeah, it was the starting point of this mm-hmm. I'd say lifelong journey. Yeah. Um, you know, into bespoke tailoring and foraging into this area. Um, and I just think about getting back to probably one of the jackets I own here. Um, if there's something in there which I do cherish, um, <clears throat> apart from it being, um, mm-hmm. expensive. But yeah, there's no, I probably no, no emotional attachment, um, at least to do to an extent where I would say, oh, this is like special. Um, okay. Because basically, basically, and that's prob- probably another principle um, that I have when I think about adding new pieces or letting other pieces go, mm-hmm. um, is that it's, I'm not, I mean, I love wearing jackets, I love wearing trousers, um, proper fitting clothing, you mm-hmm, would say, mm-hmm. um, but I'm not putting heart into them in terms of, you know, I'm, I cherish possession. Mm-hmm. That is not it. the thing. So yeah, I mean, you, you know, it, it's a continuous, um, it's a continuous process. Mm. Um, in your, in, in your, your preferences, um, you know, kind of like change over time. And this mm. is basically the same thing with with the garments. I mean, there's, mm. you know, I'm like, I'm more and more getting to a point where, when, when making a decision whether to add a garment or not, it's, you know, as I said before, um, you're probably not adding another blue jacket with a yellow over check and like mm-hmm. a green whatever you want to call it. Um, purple. But it's more like, yeah, purple. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, so, you, you, you know, this is, you know, the more, the more refined your style gets, so mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. refined being defined um, as centered around a core principle, let's say, mm-hmm, a core style mm-hmm. principle, um, 
the less you are reaching out for, you know, like the, you know, the attention grabbing pieces. Um, and yeah. you just, you just kind of like continually, I'd say, increase quality. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so you're not buying the 10th jacket that comes ready to wear and is on sale, but more like, okay, so I'd rather buy one jacket a year, but make yeah. this one bespoke um, and make it exactly to the standards that I like. And bearing mm -hmm. in mind that I will probably wear this forever and not mm -hmm. letting go. I agree. I agree. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's Great. basically it. Yeah. And um, before we get to the final question. Yes. Oh God, we have another one actually. We just got <laughs> another one. Uh, so Caustic Man would like to see you in a Madras jacket. I think you got one, right? Don't you have um, a Madras? No, unfortunately not. Um, oh, but, what? Yeah, yeah, I don't. What? Actually, I don't. But, um, okay. I, you know, Caustic Man has it right. Um, he's, uh, I mean... Just ah, I get it. He wants to see you in one means... Uh, ah, yeah, yeah, I, 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 of course. I, I mean, took it just, too. I mean, I, I, I can only recommend, um, you know, checking his feet out because he's yeah. like the, yeah. I'd say, the definition of tasteful Americana. Um, and I love that he drives a pickup truck. Exactly. So I mean, it, it makes, <laughs> that makes him even an even greater yeah, guy if, yeah. if that's possible. Absolutely. At all. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, Amado's jacket is like you know. I think Jamie, Jamie's leader of Jamie, um, the, you know, the the the, the important, mm -hmm, the, mm -hmm. the well-known photographer. He yeah. has he has uh, been wearing a Madras jacket in the past, and it looks awesome. It looks awesome. Mm -hmm, it's mm -hmm. not your standard piece for sure, mm -hmm, but it's yeah. a classic item. Um, and I mean, if I ever chance to come across one, um, which is to my liking, I'd probably pull the trigger. Mm, yeah, why not? Why not? I'm thinking about the same thing. Yeah. So, yeah, and actually there's the question back that I was going to ask, which is, um, what was the first time you were wearing a suit? Or, let's say, a classic combination. You told us that one of your oldest suits is 10 years, or the oldest suit you still own is yeah. 10 years old. But I guess you've probably been wearing one before that, yes. or what was yeah, it like? Yeah, absolutely. So mm -hmm. I'd say the, the, the first like suit that I can remember wearing was probably for my Holy Com Communion. So mm -hmm. back when I was, I don't know, how old are you when you get that? It's about... It's, 10, 11 or something? Nah, a communion, I think it's 14, 14, 14 13. Okay. So I mean, the same my, with me. In the mm -hmm. mid-teens, I'd say. And then, yeah. like, you know, you yeah. just, you, you don't really wear suits on a daily basis, um, mm -hmm. let alone on Christmas or something. Mm -hmm. um, and then I probably started wearing suits um, on a more regular basis when I was attending or when I was going to my first job. So when I was, mm -hmm. uh, I got employed by a, a traditional um, German mid-tire enterprise um, and, you know, the, the marketing boss, the department that I was working in uh, back in the days, uh, the marketing boss, um, well, kind of like ordered us to wear a suit mm -hmm. or at least a, oh, like a, a serious trousers and a jacket. Um, yeah. So then yeah. I went off and uh, went on with my mom and I went shopping with my mom. And I, I still remember the suit. It was an awful piece. Was it black? No, it was black. <laughs> Thankfully, it was black. Okay, it was, okay, okay. I can't even remember. I can, I can, I can, can't even describe the color. It was something like a grayish, so like uh -huh. a brownish gray. But Charcoal. Like, yeah, but like really bad, like you know, like really bad. And it had three buttons, so hard press, three button configuration, pants riding low. Um, mm -hmm. And now bear with me, guys. I used to wear this brownish grayish suit mm. with a apple green shirt oh and, lovely and a bl mm. blue stripe Come at me blue stripe tie so mm -hmm. like you know we all started somewhere but i mean you know looking back i mean i got 15 years of dressing experience right now but yeah. if i look back at these pictures i would you know i would love to time travel back in time and just kick myself in the head or yeah. in the arse yeah of course of and course. then hey come on get a blue suit Mm. Well, my, my first suit was black, and oh. that's why I won't go into detail. <laughs> but uh, let's, let's get to the last question of, uh, yes. and, and finish it all off. Yes. And that is finally yes. um, your shoe collection. So the maybe you collection. should grab the camera and uh, just, just do a, like, uh, what do you call it? Uh, an aerial view of your shoe collection. Yeah, actually, so um, <laughs> the shoe collection itself consists of about 40, 40 pair of shoes. So, um, uh -huh. and you don't really know, but I tell you, I'm standing in, uh, now in my sleeping room. Um, mm. So I don't store my shoes in my sleeping room, obviously. <clears throat> um, but mm. I like, got five pairs um, to show you guys with, with, of what kind of like styles consist the range. Okay, okay. So you so, actually... Yes, so I brought some. Um, you can see here, 
black uh, black oh god and um, brown chelsea <laughs> yeah we're actually running for quite a while we're on air pretty long so <laughs> you're so, that's an excuse <laughs> brown sweat chelsea boots these ones yeah. are coming from i think this sweden um moya shoes they are called um they have a rubber sole so they work in bad weather conditions um a classic configuration for a shoe um which plays well um in different types of you know occasions and settings so this works well um, with denim, it works well with flannel pants, it mm -hmm. works well um, which will pants wearing a jacket or not, doesn't matter so this is like, if you go for a boot, um, stall with a Chelsea boot, you won't regret this decision, so mm -hmm. pair number mm -hmm. one um, another one I can totally recommend is this, um, these shoes by Yanko, um, Black Oxford uh, you can see no broguing no fancy maybe, maybe you could um... Keep them a bit to the left, exactly, so yes. uh, our, our viewers can actually see them. Perfect. Yes, so mm -hmm. this um, is a well, black Oxford. Um, it has a beautiful last. It's not too pointy. It's not too round. Um, this is like the perfect business shoe, um, mm -hmm. and it goes so well uh, with basically any garment. Wouldn't probably wear this, we know, with like rougher, rougher fabrics like tweed or something. Mm, no. um, but if you think about your first proper pair of shoes, you would probably reach um, for a pair of black. Um, yeah, um, I agree. Upwards. So, Yanko, um, as most of my avid um, followers will know, I'm a tassel loafer guy. And so there's nothing to add. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I, I'm, I'm owning a probably about I don't know, I don't know six to ten pairs mm -hmm. of um, tra trousers. Yeah, and, and <laughs> tassel loafers. <laughs> um, this one being black ones uh -huh, um, by Velasca uh -huh. Milano. Um, mm -hmm. an Italian brand, great guys, great shoes. Um, and yeah, I've got like some in burgundy, um, black, as you can see here. There's um, a red sweat from Markovsky, I think mm -hmm. a now defunct um, French maker. Um, I got... Any cordovan as well? Uh, no, no cordovan no as of yet. Oh, no, okay, no cordovan as yet, so I'm lacking in that department. I found a gap, I found a gap. Yes, you did. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's, there's always something to improve, right? That's so That's yeah, so black loafers, um, um, apart from brown loafers, b b brown um, sweat loafers, you name it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And probably another pair of shoes um, is this brown sweat chucker boots. Mm -hmm. These chucker boots are another great, um, I'd say great alternative if you want to go for a bit more of a casual setting with your shoes, but still keep it nice and clean um, and grown up like let's mm -hmm. say put it that mm -hmm. way um as you can see they have been refurbished um by some guys here from cologne uh, which run a shop which treats your shoes well because um given the fact that i've uh, that i've got uh, like plenty of pairs um i can rotate these quite often so um each pair doesn't get too much wear um mm -hmm. uh, and they keep in shape and i om i'm always making sure that i add you know these shoe trees or shoe horns in there. Yeah, yeah, they're um, a necessity, I guess. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So because they prolong um, their life, the life of your, of your shoes, and um, I'd say always invest in proper shoe, shoe trees here. Um, yeah, yeah. Make them wood and not plastic, the cheap shit. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and that's uh, probably like the last pair, um, which is another lovely pair from Mem in Mallorca. Um, oh, very I subtle. I, I actually expected something um, a bit more outgoing a bit more a bit louder no um, but this is really subtle mm -hmm. yeah this is subtle this is like a, a brown pedal grain um full broke um oxford shoe um and it goes so well with the brown suit that i was um, showing you guys beforehand it goes so well with any basically any pair of flannel pants mm. um and like the rougher setting i mean the broguing adds to the country-esque um mm -hmm. you know approach of these as well um mm -hmm. And I'm not, um, well, to sum it up, I'm not much of a fan of, um, you know, fancy colored shoes or, um, you know, like really attention grabbing yeah. pieces. Yeah. Um, because, you know, I think if you come to think about how you create a look, then you think about, it's like, you know, kind of like coming up with a, with a, with a painting. Um, you, yeah. have a, you have a frame and then you have like somewhere on that painting is the focal point. And, I mean, it could be the tie, it could be the jacket. Could be the pants, could be the shoes, could be anything you want, but make sure that there's only one thing mm. that is, you know, directing a viewer's mm. gaze um, to to itself. Um, yeah. And basically, I don't think that shoes are, you know, the main main part to do that because I want people to look in my face 
when approaching me and not on my shoes. Um, they should notice. Although that, statistically, a lot of uh, people actually look. Yeah, on I mean, your they shoes. shall they shall yeah. look. Yeah, they shall look, but they should probably not remember mm. what they mm. were. You know that I like That's wear ostrich true. feathers and black patent mixed with you know brown sweat or whatever. Um, mm. But they should, you know, they, what they should take away is, okay, he's wearing proper, well-fitting, well-cared-for shoes. Yeah, and that's yeah. about it. And, you know, focal point should probably be a bit up higher on yeah. the body. So mm, most that's correct. basically the tie or the jacket. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, yeah, but I'd say roughly 35 to 40 pairs mm. um, of shoes. Um, and the, probably the, the pair that is most out there is a shoe um, or is a boot which I bought um, at the shoe snob. So Justin Fitzpatrick, yeah. um, shout yeah. out to the guy, beautiful loss, um, beautiful leathers, great collection. Um, and I um, bought one of his Balmoral um, shoes. Oh, the lovely. Boots. Um, mm. And this one is a button. This one has buttons mm -hmm. on the mm -hmm. side. Yeah. So yeah. which basically makes it... Like the ones from St. Christmas that I was... Yeah, yeah. yeah. I yeah. mean, it, they freak you out when you try to get them oh, because it wow. takes forever to button them. You need them. a tool actually to do it, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah actually, yeah, you need yeah. this like a little hook with a little mm -hmm. hook on it. Yeah. Um, but once you put them on, um, you just feel special. Because, I mean, these, these, these boots are special. Um, the model mm. itself is special. Um, mm. But this one is made from a cognac... A brown um, pebble grain leather combined with a beautiful green tweed. So awesome. The, the Balmoral yeah. part is yeah. green tweed. Um, mm -hmm. Add these buttons, and you got like a shoe that is really out there, um, mm -hmm. but totally works fine with you know mm -hmm. the more rustic setting. So the brown okay. tweed, um, the tweed, uh, the the blue grayish tweed that I showed you guys before. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So yeah, not your everyday shoe, but certainly okay. one yeah. I, I'm very fond of and very uh, cherish highly. Dennis. Yes. How do you oh, feel? Uh, we're we're now live since uh, an hour and ten minutes, and it's crazy. Okay. We're still going yes. strong, but <laughs> I feel like I feel like we could both use a break, actually. Yes. On yes. the other on the other hand, while we were talking, yeah. there were about three new questions. Okay, come on. Shoot let's away. just let's answer them real quick. Let's do yes. a, 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 a a quick lap or a quick uh, quick replies. Yes. Two words. <clears throat> I've lost, I've lost count. Give me a second. Uh, uh, do you wear over-the-calf socks? Uh, always, yeah. Yes, me too. Always. How do you feel about purple? Great color goes well with a range of colors, especially gray and blue. I like it with yellow, but I try to keep it simple. And uh, so this is probably a bit difficult for you to answer. Yeah. Are you into watches too? Oh, I am into watches. <laughs> oh, Thanks what a coincidence. Me. What a coincidence. How <laughs> about opening that left drawer in that? Yes. <laughs> you would probably have a look into this one. And I'm just, you know, bringing out the collection for you guys to have a quick, mm -hmm. um, you know, setup of admiration here. So this is the jest with all the watches. Can you see them? So we got... Uh, let me check. Yeah, yeah. Maybe you can. Can you get it a bit closer still? Yes. Yes, that's the perfect height. Maybe a bit uh, to the right. To the right. Yes. Yep. Stop like this. So, wow. Yeah. So, um, and we're not talking about millions of euros, mm -hmm. which um, are contained in this box, right? Mm -hmm. Um. So the probably the the most expensive one. Mm -hmm. Um. And we're talking very low four-digit figure. Um. Mm -hmm. Is the one down here in the first row. Um, the fourth from the from your side, that's then the left side. Um, this black one with the racing strap. Yeah. Um, that's an Omega. That's a special version uh. of the of an of an Omega um, Speedmaster, um, a version that they only sold in Japan. Um, I think mm -hmm. dating from mm -hmm. the nineteen by the end of the nineteen eighties to roughly. 91, 92 or something. Mm -hmm. um, so I was hunting this probably for like let's say at least eight months um, to get one in great condition and with one was that was not breaking the bank um, at that mm -hmm. time. Um, and what what else do we got? We got like the oldest watch, um, which is this. And I tried to it open. <laughs> you need your so, third hand there. Yes. So where's the assistant? So this one, <laughs> this one is the the oldest watch. I hope you can yeah. see it. Yeah. Um, this is dating back from 1948. Mm, um, and how would I know? Um, because there's an inscription on the back of the watch, mm -hmm. um, and it was obviously a present given to one Mr. W. Dot Green, mm -hmm. whoever that was. That um, doesn't sound German to me. 
It, no, it's actually not. It's actually not. Oh, I bought no. this one uh, from, um, you know, some of the probably most favorite um, internet sellers of all time, which is LuxSwap. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure you guys know him. Yeah, of course. Um, yeah. Great guy, Matt, Matt, uh, Matt, Matt's his name. Um, great guy, and I bought this watch um, mm -hmm. from him mm -hmm. and dearly love it. Um, and probably another and one. And now the cheapest and the most, where we actually, you know, the dream watch and the cheapest. Let's start with the cheapest and then we finish off with the dream watch. Okay? I think the, the cheapest watch might be this Seiko here. So like mm. the gold, a, go, a fake golden Seiko. Um, mm. And telling about the brand, I love Seiko. They're like, you know, yeah. they're the, the entry level for mechanical watches that doesn't mm -hmm. break the bank, have great aesthetics, mm -hmm. great mm -hmm. movements. Um, so definitely can recommend this one. Mm. Um, and The Grail watch for me personally, um, there are three, um, mm -hmm. and they're not very, um, you know, inventive. So bear with me, guys, and sorry about that. But um, it's definitely the NAP in Royal Oak. Um, oh yeah, it's such a great watch. Mm -hmm. um, it certainly would be a um, Lange and Söhne Retrograd Perpetual Calendar. Um, <laughs> God, that's out of you know, this world. <laughs> this is like yeah. like with a salmon dial. They have a salmon yeah. dial version. I think it's, it's set in platinum or something. Uh -huh. Like probably the be most beautiful watch I've ever laid my eyes upon. Um, and I think it's only about like, let's say 250,000 euros or something. So mm -hmm. um, not too far out there. Mm -hmm. um, just kidding. Um, and probably the mm -hmm. third watch, which is probably my next acquisition, um, will be a Rolex, um, not your run of the mill, you know, Submariner, um, mm -hmm. but something a bit more classic. Um, which would be the Oyster Perpetual, a day day mm -hmm. version. Yeah, interesting. Uh, oh, yeah, I love this one too. In a yellow gold, or what are you going to go for? Yeah, um, I was thinking about the the bicolor version. So okay, gold, um, mm -hmm. gold and steel. Um, yeah. It might be, you know, kind of like, I'm not so sure about the, the dial setting. Um, I love Roman numbers. Roman mm -hmm. dial would be a great mm -hmm. addition. Um, because as of now, uh, the actually. Only On the day date, I would also go for the Roman dials. It's, uh, yeah, and I think yeah. there's, you know, there's a, there's a reference number that's a 16013. Um, mm -hmm. So this dates back, I think, to the early 80s. Um, it mm -hmm. was the first um, oyster um, that came with a, you know, um, I think with the date setting being um, integrated into the ground uh, without having to repeat the process on mm -hmm. day after day. So, um, yeah, mm -hmm. this would be the version. Um, and I think in terms of um you know the the amount of money that you would need to spend that's probably in the 2k roughly two and a half k bracket yeah so um, you're going and, vintage for that one yeah exactly i'm going mm -hmm. vintage I'm, i mean like there's a lot of great um modern watches but as of now i'm i'd say probably more like you know yeah, a vintage yeah. obsessed mm -hmm. vintage um, inspired watch collector um, and there's a lot of, you know, but you're definitely a collector. There's no I'm doubt about that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> awesome. Absolutely. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah. Collect Thank you for that insight, Dennis. That was My incredible. Pleasure. Yeah. My pleasure. And I feel like we both have deserved a break right now. And if there are any further questions, you can also uh, just write them directly to us, uh, send us a DM. No worries about that. And we're, we're still at 33 viewers. And I, the funny thing is when I, uh, when the live stream was interrupted, it told us yeah. we had over 500 viewers. What? Like, yeah, not at the same time, but in total, yeah. over 500 okay. viewers. That's crazy. That's and uh, we would like to say thank you to everyone who joined, everyone who Absolutely. bared with us for more than a minute or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I could go on forever, but it's a bit... Um, It's not, it's not as... Uh, it's also very technically very difficult, as we have discovered. Yeah. Uh, so thanks again for the, yeah, for the, uh, positive vibes in the chat and for the ongoing positivity. I think this has been a great, um, diversion from the usual stuff we do on Instagram and also like our daily routines that we now all face due to, uh, the home office. And the quarantine. <laughs> so there's the virus again. <laughs> yeah, shit. I wasn't gonna mention it. But only it. at the end. <laughs> But only at the end. Only at the end. Most most people are uh, gone anyway. So <laughs> yeah. thank you very much for watching and uh, leave us a comment. Follow each of us, and I think we might do something similar in the future again. It was big fun, guys. Thanks for having us yeah. and thanks for for bearing with us. Um, you know my mumbling my ger heavily German influenced accent um, and you still manage to keep keep it up keep up 
uh, with us. Uh, so thanks, thanks a ton for your time. I agree. I don't have anything to add. Thanks, guys, and I'm going to call it quits now. Thank Let's you so much. Around. Let's see. How do you shut off a live stream? I don't know. Just I'm just gonna kick you, kick you kick out of out. it. Yeah. <laughs> See you, Dennis. Have a good one. Yeah. Bye, bye. <laughs>